Okay, here we are Friday morning and we're ready to do another day of our zero DTE options trading experiment. And I got the signal. I'm going to take the signal here and I'm going to try to get 80 on this. And you know, I I think I did the wrong one on this. Darn it. Let me cancel this. Okay, so I put the wrong strikes on on that. I gotta wake up. Okay, so it's, it's, we're, we're trying to do the four seven seven five, four seven seven zero. That's right. No wonder we couldn't get that credit up there. So we're trying to put this one on for ninety. And we'll send that off. Come on, ninety. Okay, so that we got filled right there. So we got filled at ninety. So let's go ahead and we'll lock that in. And here we go. So we're off and running on this one. All right, so here we go. This is Friday, the last day of the week, last day of the year. Holy moly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set my uh, my exit order right now to get out of this. My profit my profit exit. And so I need, I need to buy that back at 40 to make my 50 bucks. So I'll send that off. Buy back at 40. There it is. So that's working. All right. So now we're officially off and running. Here we go. All right. So let's go. So uh, I'm going to tune back into the room again. So every morning we get on here uh, with this tra our trading room that we're in and where we trade the Vince trade, the Vince strategy. And we go in here and uh, just trade live and chat and listen. T today, uh, Brad's running it. My main man, Brad's running it. So let's tune into this. I'll just, we'll just kind of like listen along here. And off screen, which you can't see, you're, as uh, all, you, all you can see on your screen is my trade here as it ticks by. But on another monitor, I have his uh, his screen, which if, like if you hear him, his voice over ref like referring to different things. He's probably showing it on his screen, which I just can't put both screens on here at the same time. So, so we'll just tune in and listen to him. If you're interested in learning more about this strategy, this Vince strategy, this is a micro futures day trading strategy that we do every day, every morning. And it's really cool. It's working really well. And we have a great room. And if you're interested in joining us, just let me know and I'll hook you up. Just send me an email or go over to my website. You can go over there and just uh, sign up for my free email newsletter. That's the easiest way. Sign up for my free email newsletter. You'll get a welcome email from me as soon as you sign up. Just reply back to that welcome email and say, tell me more about the Vince trade. Vince, V-I-N-C-E. And we'll go from there. All right, so let's just tune into the room now and see how this trade goes. Volume or even try on to trade the minis and whatever else. Just no strategy. And when you have no strategy, the, the blow-up accounts prove that for me anyway. So that's good. Top step, Josh. All right, yes, let's go back. Anybody, is the Dow, Dow's hanging out for a little bit? That's fine. NQ, look at that. Go, Dan. Oh, Dan, if you better have taken some money at that one. Got reloaded, and <laughs> you may get your touch. If you reloaded, yep, that is good. Nice, nice. All right, Dan. You're so close. I jinxed you again. I'm sorry, Dan. I shouldn't bring that up. Let's get off the we won't even look at the NQ. Let's just look at the yes. This will go this will help us. Well, you don't want to drop it. <laughs> uh, what oh, okay. So my Dow stop just got filled. So we protected our Dow. Stop right there. Uh, at that plus one, it came down and touched it. I only put that there as a uh, just as a visual, so we we see it. But nothing wrong with that. We if it comes back down and uh, re-enters here, we would let's look at a re-entry point. So we would rinse and repeat. So we got in right about this level at this thirty-eight thousand. Let's do that again. Keep it right above that thirty-eight thousand mark, and. See if the market allows us to do that. If it comes back and trades the range, the expectation is we don't know. Sometimes you could take your, if you weren't in the trade, a plus one is right in that bid zone area potentially. Again, we're in such a tight 
tight range for the Dow. I mean, if we're looking here with still, what is it? Um, oh, this is the yes on the Dow. We're looking at 93 points of movement in range so far. And if we go back to our checklist, this is the reason why we do the checklist is 276 and this is 93, move it to 93. And we've only moved, expanded the range to 34% of the ATR. So it still says volume and we're, we're driving a race car <clears throat> in a school zone with uh, all kinds of um, all kinds of little uh, throttle uh, protections and stops and all kinds of crazy whatever what is it what they used to do with those uh, the chips they would use a chip to uh, kind of throttle back the engine performance so we've got all kinds of chips on that motor so she can't run and breathe like she should be. Anyway, that's a piss poor analogy, and uh, you're welcome. You're welcome for that. <laughs> All right, Reed, show us a little bit of something about Adam. Order filled. Defend it against now for the sixth time, so that this level is a magnet, and is what Adam is saying is posted, so don't overtrade. So moving ES, so what that basically is looking at here. Let's go over here and uh, take a look at the yes. With information is good, but application of that information is what you're always looking for. So let's go ES, came up to that 36 level and uh, potentially is moving back towards that magnet of 28 is what Adam's saying. So if it retouches it again, that has a potential. So. At this point, we're looking at a, and if it touches here, we'll go ahead and buy that. And I'm going to move it off of the lock in there. So do you wish to uh, move it? Or no, let's move it back up here. Right there at the 28 level or that low a day, right? Yeah, tweak it. So our ES, we're looking for that moving into the outside area of ranges and then traveling back towards POC. So that's looking at a 2850 to a 3225. So we're looking at a whole five point move potential as our next target. BK, okay, new low on the Russell. Nice. All right. All right, BK. We'll get over there to the Russell for you. I'm sorry to neglect you, Russell traders, but uh, I even have to be the guy that reminds Rod that friends don't let friends trade the Russell. <laughs> But interesting. Order uh, filled. Russell actually is moving nicely down here. Let's see uh, if the Russell respects this particular level on this. So that 62. Nice. Okay. Are you short? And Okay. New low. Negative two. Did Dano get it? Oh, let's look. Did someone say Dano got it? Okay, no, Dano, Dano hadn't gotten his target yet. I thought somebody was, I thought, I thought B or not was uh, saying he got to his target already. Nice. Now, this is where we get hurt is, okay, we're seeing Dan. He's He's been trading down here from the, uh, down in the uh, bid zone and been working up here as a uh, primary target and even a secondary target. Here we get excited about what Dan's doing and we say, oh, well, surely we could buy in right here and go from there. That's where we get ourselves. That's where we kick ourselves square in the um, in the, uh, you know, genital area for all all genders and. And pretend genders there there are out there. You don't want to kick yourself in whatever genitals that you have. <laughs> even though there's only basically two genders, but I digress on common sense. So I apologize for that. Dan, don't be jinxing yourself. Look at that. You got to hit that. You got to hit that plus one, right? Did you hit it? Did you take that at the 07 or are you being selfish? You took it. All right, Dano. Good job, baby. Good job. It's fun to 
celebrate successes. Yes, we're still kind of in the middle of the muck looking for a potential move to the outer levels. The Dow, the Dow, look at that. So we took that, we sold that one off and she's looking to trade back and boring back down to uh, a level we want to get back in at. We will test it to see. Uh, at this point, because it has tested once, has tested twice, uh, from a rinse and repeat heat standpoint if somebody wanted to uh, volume up a little bit um, just the the pattern itself is showing a potential opportunity to do that uh, when we look at the hey the Russell came right down to that close to that level within a point two points before uh, it's moved back up into that range and also this T line. So you're looking here at the Russell. Let me digress a minute. The order filled. The Russell here is doing exactly what, you know, when we look at levels, that's what you want to identify is why did it move back up? And then you look left and you start to see, okay, hey, right in these, these little candles here, right at this point of control. And also where this T line is, does that are the buyers seeing that and wanting to push it up to that new level? That's what you're watching for. You can watch out of any one of the instruments. That's These are key areas of what you're looking for when it pertains to whatever instrument you're watching. Dow, we're sitting here looking. So it's been kind of pushing and staying under its point of control for a while. It uh, looks like it potentially could move point of control down here eventually uh, into uh, that previous day point of control. Uh, so this area, if it stays down here a while, could move the developing point of control back down to this area. Uh, we'll wait and see. So right now it's at 380. So we'll, as it trades out here a little bit more, we'll see what happens. Yes. Still looking to come back and test that 48.28. So read your some of that additional information that you um, like to watch is kind of stuff that we keep note of. In Q in the middle of the muck. I want to look here a minute. Why did I have? Oh, I had a second buy based on here okay so uh, Dan's gonna bless all of us uh, today here with the uh, the end of the year uh, he's gonna send us all gift cards to uh, whatever our favorite coffee place is locally we'll all get a ten dollar gift card for that successful trade that we helped him manage so uh, anybody that agrees with me on uh, Dan buying us all coffee gift cards, uh, give me a one just to make sure that we're in agreement. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Dano. Looks like you're going to be sending us some gift cards. <clears throat> Love it. Love it. Go, Dan. Go, Dan. <laughs> And the gift card is not to Walmart to buy, you know, a great value donut shop coffee. It is to, I mean, we've got to go high brow, high brow, brow coffee, wherever that is. I used to like Starbucks, but they got goofy on a bunch of their other crap. And they get too exotic. And there's too many, there's actually too many Karens that go to, go to Starbucks for my taste. I need some rugged man's man coffee, you know, where you brew it over the campfire for four hours and you just pulverize the heck out of those coffee beans to where they got that burnt charred flavor. Isn't that the greatest coffee ever? <laughs> ah, there you go. I'll buy you all some kombucha. Nice. Nice. There you go. That's awesome. <clears throat> Now you really get to see how many people are in this room. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I think uh, for this off day that nobody knew about, we have 53 in the room. Uh, I, 
uh, I can see it. Um, uh, Rod has the uh, availability to see how many. So for normally there's an average in anywhere from 80 to 120, 140, given give or take the day. Uh, so yeah, for uh, an off day that nobody knew we were going to be doing this, uh, 53, that's a good number. That's good. Duncan is good. Yeah, Duncan, Duncan coffee's good. I like that. <clears throat> uh, I think I told y'all a couple of days ago about uh, my barbecue competition. Uh, I would, con here in Texas, we compete in brisket, ribs, uh, a half a chicken. Uh, those are the primary ones. Uh, we don't do pork butt. Uh, uh, Texan, Texas, we're more about beef when it comes to competition. And then we do a half a chicken instead of, I think, Kansas City groups, you know, the different affiliations. They do like chicken thighs as their competition, whatever. Uh, my consistency was in pork ribs. I won, uh, I've got the most uh, wins and placements in my pork ribs. I uh, actually uh, qualified for the um, Kansas City uh, Invitational back in 2007. I think, yeah, 2007. I did a Kansas City Invitational, saw Myron Mixon and all those boys and whatnot, and even uh, did some of the little bit of the, uh, not TV directly, but uh, did some local stuff uh, that, you know, nobody ever watched or whatever. Uh, so enjoyed that a lot. So barbecue is like coffee. Everybody has a different palate for it and a different thing that they call great. Uh, so it's always unique to hear people's love of anything, really. I mean, and... You know, some per some when it came to barbecue, some people love to just smoke the crap out of it to where it tastes like an ashtray, uh, and they call that great barbecue, and that was what they grew up and what they knew and what was familiar. Um, I'm not that guy. I mean, I like a good smoke, but not a heavy smoke. So, do you inject or just rub? Uh, well, <laughs> that's a loaded question. That's funny. Um, when it comes to, well, I uh, would do a lot with brining. I would do uh, a lot of brine, especially when it came to poultry, to a chicken or a turkey or any of that kind of stuff. I would uh, brine and injecting is just kind of the uh, fast way of doing that. Uh, but I uh, played around with both. Uh, definitely, uh, you want to give it time to... Um, to take on the spice and to permeate. So yeah, a brine or an injection all works really, really good for that. Uh, you like to follow T-Roy Cooks on YouTube? Okay, I don't know that particular group, but I now that you have it there, I definitely will look them up. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of YouTube guys. Uh, uh, what was it, the Barbecue Pit Boys? And they're the old guys that cook in the backyard. They've got recipes out the wazoo. Uh, all kinds of different. There's a, a meat, uh, the meat chemist or the meat. Uh, he's He's got a lot of great recipes and a lot of sound science to it. I tell you, the best thing we ever did is we uh, got, uh, I told you, I had a uh, momentary lapse in sanity and uh, took over a barbecue restaurant here locally for a couple years and during that time one of the best things we ever did was put together a uh, kind of a team building type of uh, program for for uh, groups when corporate groups are coming into Dallas they want a Texas kind of feel so we put together a state competition uh, so our barbecue bill group uh, would uh, We'd have a corporate group of 40, 50 people uh, meet up at the blacksmith shop downtown Grapevine area. And uh, we'd break them out into groups and uh, have them compete against each other uh, cooking. Uh, we'd do appetizers. Uh, we'd do jalapeno poppers. 
uh, uh, pork on the half shell, which is basically a sausage link cut in little links with a pineapple toothpick on top, glazed in barbecue sauce. Put that on the, put that quickly as an appetizer on the smoker for a little bit, and that really turns out uh, delicious and easy to do. But anyway, uh, we would have them kind of just work around the fact of making their steaks, uh, and then we'd have each team have a judge represent the team and then they would sample all the different stakes and then uh, they'd win trophies and whatnot. It was actually very lucrative. Uh, we would charge, um, we'd charge about 150 a head. And then when people are spending corporate money and they had a good time, uh, they would always tip very graciously. And luckily we, we made it a BYOB, so we told the corporate people, "If y'all want to do it, you bring your stuff, but you know, take care of, take care of the uh, cooking team, you know." And so we always enjoyed that as well. So a lot of good times. So you'd make more money on an event like that than you would on just a week of a average receipts on the barbecue restaurant sometimes. So anyway, I digress. Anybody want to get into the restaurant business, please talk to me. I will talk you out of it. Keep barbecue a hobby. Make it fun. Have fun in your backyard. Go compete a little bit with your neighbors or with whatever. But beyond that, stay away. <laughs> hey, the market is moving fast. The fast is watching a brisket getting smoked. Now that is no lie. <laughs> Learning to trade is like learning how to cook brisket. I mean, the first couple of tries and the first couple of briskets, you know, if you don't have enough YouTube uh, information back in that day, you didn't actually. Um, you could uh, really, uh, really make a uh, hockey puck out of a piece of brisket or undercook it and do all kinds of stupid stuff. I mean, I've seen when you go to these competitions, the funny part is you go and I've judged several of them and it's kind of funny. You're sitting there going, okay, somebody actually believes they're a really good cook and that they cook this <laughs> thinking that this, this is awesome. And it would, I mean, it was undercooked uh, or, you know, whatever. And as a judge, you're taking your life in your own hands, judging chicken because you never know. You never know when it comes to, yeah, you just never know. Sorry. Let's go back to trading. The NQ is now moving back up, uh, bounced off of plus one. So that was a perfect opportunity to uh, visit the ranges uh, and looking to trade to VWAP and also to that plus one level. So we can see, we can see it's kind of right here in the Renko charts. Let me maximize this a bit. You can see here over the last hour or so, we're kind of built out a little bit of a range. So that is an opportunity to dance between the raindrops, uh, looking at, you know, taking a long at a plus one or taking a short at a, um, or a, taking a long at minus one and taking a short at plus one. Yeah, Linus agreed. You tried it myself and almost killed me. <laughs> That's awesome. Restauranting is tough. Way of life. I have nothing but respect. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I When it comes to restaurant, especially the mom and pop type group, I mean, these chains now are so corporatized uh, to some level, you know, I mean, I get it, but any mom and pop, any mom and pop business, no matter what it is, that is, I, I admire the umspa or whatever that word is. I matter. I just admire their commitment, their commitment and their willingness to go at risk for something they love or believe in. That's why I'm a trader. I think I told y'all that. Uh, if I take my losses, they're all my losses, and I'm okay with that. If I and I celebrate my wins the same way, but I don't have to rely on, I don't have to rely on knucklehead people that think a uh, a work schedule is a suggestion. 
I don't know if it's a millennial mindset or it, it's just a people mindset. You know, there's just some people that, you know, are knuckleheads. It's not an age difference thing. It's just a knucklehead difference. All right, NQ, we're just sitting around doing our stuff. 930 candle is opening up. Let's take a look here. I like to look at the candle changes. NQ candle uh, opened up here is moving down. We'll see if she moves and touches right here, touches its point of control. This would be a potential thought is to see, okay, is it going to hold its hold its point of control? At that point, if you see it touch or see it hold and moving back above, you could take a long position and then have a real tight little scalp on it. But you got to wait to see if it's holding first is one of the keys. So it did touch down below it and moving back up. So there's some decision points, but this is definitely dancing in between the raindrops. Right now it doesn't look like it's going to hold. So the good thing is we didn't take an entry. Now the next level down is looking at this value area. But watch this candle and if it moves down near this 84 this this previous candle wick and stays above it then that's also some micro information for you if you're just dying to dying to trade at the moment but look here that that is that plus one level so if we get down here and touch that 84 then we could possibly see this dancing between the raindrop type move. But we are just going slower than snail's pace on this thing for sure. Uh, all right, question. That's good. Oh, wow, Dan. Okay, what's a good smoker to buy? Okay, I've gone from building my own smokers out of huge uh, uh, propane tanks to electric smokers, to uh, pellet smokers. Look here at the NQ. We just took out that bottom candle, the previous candle. Order filled. This is at that one. You could look if you're dancing between the raindrops. We could see. I tell you what, I'm going to dance between the raindrops. I'm going to buy one. Uh, hold on a minute. I'm thinking about right, I'm going to wait till it gets down to this value area low. I'm going to buy one based on. Let's, let's just do that right uh, yes. Okay. So if it comes down here and touches this level, then I'm going to buy one. Order filled. Order filled. Just to test to see. And look at me. This is why you don't do that. <laughs> this is why you don't do it. I'm going to put another one here. The reason my reasoning for entry was looking at that value area low. Now it looks like it potentially is going to come down here. Order filled. Oh, look at that. Look at that move on plus two and that low of day. Anyway, I get quiet when I'm trading. Uh, that's funny. Dan, so my recommendation is it doesn't matter what you trade with or what you uh, what you buy. Uh, propane, uh, those master built propane boxes, or I mean, Order it doesn't really matter. Let's see, we're gonna watch this thing move its way down. Look at that. Order filled. Down. Impulse move down. Took out near t touch of the low of day and making an impulse back up this is a graceful exit point uh potentially well let's see no i'm not gonna jump so that's a flash down let's see if it let's, let's watch it a minute uh let's see i'm gonna um i'm gonna let's see i'm gonna sell one of those off i gracefully exited one of those uh just because I don't like the movement per se just yet, but we are in the bid zone. Uh, I'm going to buy back in potentially down at this level, this 58 level. 
Let's watch this low of day. Let's see if she did. This is a double test here. Let's see if she retest and what happens. What's going on in the ES? Where are we shooting here? ES is pulled back. Okay, it's holding, trying to hold that 28 level. Uh, the Dow, she is moving down into the potential there. NQ, well, we actually got some movement going, so I got quiet. So pretty funny. Yeah, liquidity grab is right. Tell you what, we break back in. I'm going to go ahead and add one more Order filled. here. And I'm going to put a stop back here just because I'm mentally looking at that as a touch and hold. Put this back up here as a sell Order stop submitted. level. So I got a sell stop below for two. Just kind Order of. Submitted. I'm making the assumption that this is the low for the moment and we'll trade it at least back up here to open. I'm going to put it back up to its open and sell off on one. <clears throat> She's still debating in this area of holding it. So the buyers and the sellers are fighting right here. Uh, let's look left a minute to see what's going on left or what hap has happened left. Here's the point of control of previous day. There's a push here. This 17067 is a value area low for uh, Wednesday. So, and we've seen some holding at that level. Let's see if buyers are, if that's being defended or if sellers are gonna keep pushing this down to this particular uh, T line. I'll move that up so we can visually see it. This is the MNQ. Take a little sneak peek at the S. Yes. The S yes is okay. We've still got that one trade. We got back in here at the 27. We're going to keep that and hold the Dow. We did not get in. Oh, we got that close to getting in on that trade on the Dow buying too, but we're not in yet. So interesting. Yes. All right. Back to the NQ a little bit just to kind of see what she's doing. The Dow, the ES. I like to look at the NQ and the ES kind of uh, together. So the ES is trying to hold that low of day area. We're trying to get back inside day. We're now outside day down. And we, um, I went ahead and got out on my on my trade on the NQ. So I'm looking for I'm looking for the next touchdown here at the 55 level. So if it is does make it down at, you know, at this 55 level, then that would be my next reentry point. Is right. I would put it up just a touch. That 56 7 level. Now, when we were talking this morning about our bid zones, of course, this is the bid zone. I I put my stop out there to go ahead and minimize it. Um, that's just my little timid uh, type of way of kind of allowing it to work back down gracefully, exiting and then getting back in if it uh, keeps pushing down to this particular level. Uh, since we do know that there's there's some shelves here, uh, previous shelves, um, that's kind of expanding in that level to see. <clears throat> ESYs, our ES trade is um, still kind of holding uh, two points down, looking to hold 26. Going back here a minute into, uh, I just, that's what I typically do is look at, I'm looking for Adam's opinion, uh, defended again now six times, levels magnet is posted, 
we remain in holiday chop, don't over trade. Okay, so if 28 fails, dip to 23 and 15. If so he's looking at a 23 and a 15 below on the uh, potential. So right here on the S. Yes, uh, Order filled. Down here's the uh, 23. Look at the S. Yes. And what is he taught? Why does he say 23 is my question always? 25 and 23 is right here in the middle of this muck, right in this level right here. So saying that that would be the first level to defend. Right now it moved down to a 25 and is battling to uh, stay above that 25. So you got a little bit of a shelf here. You got a value area high. All right, I'm thinking our Dow just got entered. No, what did to get entered? Oh, we okay, we got in at that 55 level. There we go. Okay. So the NQ, we're now nearing our bid zone or our below of our bid zone. So if we break down below it and then trade back into it. Okay, so we're starting to get into some trouble here. Um, there's like a pretty good size move down. So we're getting kind of close to our, uh, our exit order. So our exit order is two times of what we typically bring in. So our goal to bring in, our goal is to bring in 50 bucks on each one of these. So our exit order, if it moves against us is if it hits $100, that's our, that's our bail point. That's our get the F out point. That's my favorite. That, that's my favorite, uh, technique. My favorite adjustment is to get the F out. So you can see we're getting pretty close here. We're getting down there. So I'm going to get ready to take the sucker off. This this will be if this if this one comes off, this will be our second our second losing trade where we've had to take it off at like what I call the maximum pain point. The maximum pain point is our exit point. It's not the total that's at risk. The total that is at risk on these is like 400 bucks, but we don't want to have it go that far. We we want, we want to get out with a small loss so it takes us less wins to make that back. So we're getting closer here. We're like down 80, 90. It's kind of bouncing around. We're at 89. Kind of flirting with eighty with ninety here. I haven't seen one hundred yet. Oh, I saw it for a second one hundred four. So I don't want to jump the gun on this one. But last time, the last one we did, I waited just a little too long. I got out at minus one twenty-five, one hundred twenty-five bucks, twenty-five bucks over where I was trying to get out at one hundred dollars. So I don't want to let that happen again if I can help it. So there's ninety-nine. So I'm just going to go ahead and get out of this. So let's just go confirm and send. Let's go over here, see if it's if it's gonna if it's gonna take. It's not it's at 190, so I may need to change that. Let me change that to the mark. Okay, so now we're trying to get out at 180. The mark is showing 185. I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna do this again. Now we're back down at minus 90. So let me uh, re cancel and replace this. Let me. Um, okay, so now we're asking 180. We're trying to get out at 180. That puts us at around $90, $90 down. There's 100. Yes, yeah, so I'm just trying to get the F out of here. Uh, there we go. So we got filled at 180. So we took our loss. Exit at 180. We took 180. No, we got 180. So that gives us a total loss of $90.
So this trade was a loser. All right, so let's pull out our Excel sheet here and fill in this thing for today. So today is 12, 29, 23. And this was, this is a loser. Loser. Minus 90. So we took a $90 loss on this one. Our total risk on this is 410. And this trade took us 40 minutes. We'll put 40 minutes in here. 40 minutes. And oh, those are in the wrong column. What, what am I doing? Okay. So here's today, 1229. We lost 90. 410 risk, 40 minutes in trade. And so that takes our numbers to here. I'm just going to recalculate these because I always, I never trust these numbers for some reason. I'm sort of sick in the head like that. So I'm just going to recalculate all these now. Come down here and we'll say, we'll calculate. So 835 is what we've made. We've lost 270 now. Hey! What's that thing that that guy used to say on the Larry Shander show? Hey ya! Hua, hua. I forgot. And then uh, we're going to calculate these two numbers. So 835 of our wins minus 270, our losses, takes us to 565. We have a total return now of 565 bucks on 420. So that's still over 100%. So win a little, lose a little. We still have an amazing return, 565 uh, bucks on 410 so over 100 percent return in less than a month and we have some more days here to go until we hit our 20 days in trade which is like there's 20 there's 20 trading days in a month so that's kind of how i'm considering this experiment on a month of trading so we'll see what the market gives us next week then the, the new year what the new year gives us all right that's it if you'd like to follow along with me on this trade just make sure that you're subscribed to my youtube channel below just hit that subscribe button and also be sure to join me on my website, my free, my free email newsletter. Go over there, sign up for my free email newsletter. I'll leave a link to my website in the description below. And after you sign up to my free email newsletter, you'll get a welcome email from me. Just reply back to that welcome email and let me know you'd like to follow along on the Zero DTE projects. And I'll make sure you're good to go. All right, that's it. Happy New Year. This is, this is the last trading day of 2023 hope you have a good new year's and we'll see you next year